If Haiti, a god awful thing to say, if Haiti just quietly sunk into the Caribbean or rose up 300 feet, it wouldn't matter a whole but lot in terms of our the- Ah, yes. Joe Biden, years ago on Haiti. You know, the Reverend Al Charlatan and all the Democrats, they were all very angry when President Trump referred to Haiti as a bipole country. Because everything they say is a lie. Pretty much true. If you go with that rule, you're on the side of the angels the overwhelming majority of the time. The Reverend Al Charlatan. Oh, no, Haiti, you know, that always articulate. No, Haiti, how dare you uh, disparage Haiti? And I was just, I was texting with a friend of mine, a friend Brian, and and I said, hey, you know, my neighbors, my friends, they went on vacation to the Dominican Republic, which shares the island of Hispaniola with Haiti. Uh, Haiti in the west and uh, Dominican Republic in the east. And I said, hey, my best girl and I, we went to the Dominican Republic. And it just occurred to me. You know, and he said, well, why in the Dominican Republic, you know, they're not engaging in cannibalism. I said, well, as far as we know, but uh, the buffet line at the resort was a little funky, I've got to say. You know, bada boom. And my best girl did get sick as a dog when we were in the uh, Dominican Republic. Never seen her that sick. And it was from the food. I'm not going to recommend the Dominican Republic highly as a resort destination, got to say, unless you're Charlie Rangel, of course, because, and uh, who else? Uh, Senator, um, you know, uh, Goldbricks, uh, Bob Martinez. Menendez. Menendez, he, uh, yeah, because he was going down there for the child hookers, right? That was the story years ago, that he was going down there for the the underage uh, prostitutes. That's uh, your Democrat party. Your Democrat party is not normal, not normal. They're not. And the Clintons went there with the Clinton Foundation. And, and uh, you know, that's how they make Everything's a shakedown with them, of course. And uh, Bill fakes the sincerity and Hillary doesn't. She was our Secretary of State in the Biden administration when we bombed more countries than any administration since World War II. Pay no attention to that. He called Haiti an S-hole country. Yeah. Why would he do that, Reverend Al? Was he channeling gurgle? Everybody knows that Haiti has been the case forever and ever. Why do you think the French fled there like it was on fire? Haitians have been the victims of, uh, you know, not only our country, but Canada and France uh, for years, historically. They're black. They're poor. It's the poorest country in the hemisphere. Uh, They have been exploit it, and it continues. Can anybody uh, tell us how many centuries it's going to be before this stops being a front and center issue? How many generations, how many centuries? Um, You know, France was poor centuries ago. They were poor at the end of World War II. We had to go in and bail them out. A lot of countries have been poor over the centuries, but don't continue to be poor. And very few countries still engage in cannibalism, Maxine Waters, but that's your Democrat party. They're they're not on the side of civilization. Haitian lives are black lives. And if we truly believe that black lives matter, then we must and you don't. course. Ayanna Presley, who's, uh, I think, pro-terrorist, among other things. And, uh, you know, they keep saying this, black lives matter. They burned down the country over black lives matter. They abort 400 out of every 1,000 black pregnancies. There were more than 10,000 African Americans murdered last year in the United States since George Floyd died of heart failure while resisting arrest again. Since the day that George Floyd died, uh, rough back-of-the-envelope numbers, 30,000 African Americans have died of murder in the United States. Do they care about those 30,000 black lives? It goes to the old Joseph Stalin thing. A single death is a tragedy. A million deaths are a statistic. You're a Democrat party. They're, uh, to say they're not pro-life would be generous understatement. A lot of people Asian living in Mexico, in Tapachula, but uh, it's not the destination. The destination of the older people ha- Asian is in the United States. The destination of all the Haitian people is the United States. They're not going to Chapachula. 
coming to the United States. More than 75,000, maybe 100,000 now illegal aliens just since October. Not since Biden took office, just since the beginning of October, the beginning of the idiotic government fiscal year. Back in January, it was more than 75,000. And by the way, they have now acknowledged at least 1.8 million gotaways on our southern borders since Joe Biden took office. How many of them are being ushered in by, and this is true, I'm going to get to this shortly, ISIS affiliates in Mexico. No kidding. Your Democrat Party. Will now, you go back to Haiti? No, 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 never, never. Never, never. Why would you? You got out. Now, I mean, again, it's a beautiful tropical island where there are things growing naturally everywhere, and you're surrounded by fish, and everybody's starving to death. It's the old, you know, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. How can you be starving on a beautiful tropical island that's dripping with greenery and surrounded by, you know, Americans go down there to rent boats to catch the big fish all day long, and you people are starving to death? Wow. I think you might be beyond saving, beyond helping. What a beep whole country you guys have created. But, you know, Maxine Waters blames Canada and the United States and France because, because those are mostly white people. That anti-Semite at MIT is a Canadian-Palestinian. He should be immediately deported, escorted to the border, and tossed across. Mm-mm-mm. Amazing. Now, uh, I know we're accustomed to being lied to by the liars that, that lie all the time. And uh, the old Elena Gorakova, the Soviet author in her book, A Mountain of Crumbs, the rules are simple. They lie to us. We know they're lying. They know we know they're lying, but they keep lying to us. That's a Soviet book by a woman who was not happy with the Soviet Union. Now, the left is here. They love accusing everybody of being Russian. You know, if you're pro-American, have an American flag, serve in the military, they accuse you of being a Russian, Russian stooge, from Donald Trump to Tucker Carlson and to Tulsi Gabbard, a Democrat member of Congress from Hawaii serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. Joe Biden at the State of the Union address mangled the name of Lake and Riley uh, twice. He tried a little bit. He had a button in his hand, but he can't read. He can't think. He can't speak. Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. And that really upset the Democrats. They're not upset that Lake and Riley was killed. They're not upset that Joe Biden called her Lincoln Riley. They're upset that he used the word illegal because the Democratic Party is, I think, maybe on the precipice of Haitian-style cannibalism in the United States of America. Joe Biden was asked on Friday by a reporter, and um, it was uh, under the wing of Air Force One, should you have used the word illegal? This is what the whole news media, as stooges for Putin and the Democrats, this is what they're obsessed with, and Joe Biden, and they always put him someplace where you can't quite hear him. Do you regret using the word illegal to describe immigrants last night, sir? Well, I probably, I don't regret it. Technically, not supposed to be here. Technically, that was Friday. That was back then. That was last week. That's a clown question, bro. Do you regret using the word illegal in describing an illegal alien who then murdered an innocent young woman, not like some, you know, crack dealer mall who's in her apartment when the police raid her house and her boyfriend shoots the police because that woman would be a hero of the Democrat Party. Like Breonna Taylor. And uh, George Floyd, the uh, career criminal junkie who essentially died of heart failure because of too much fentanyl in his blood system, he's a hero of the Democrat Party. But when it comes to Lake and Riley being murdered by an illegal alien from Venezuela, their hero is the illegal alien murderer from Venezuela. That's your Democrat Party. Then Joe Biden sat down with left-wing radical extremist Jonathan Capehart, who is a fraud as a journalist, And Capehart fed him the word because he's supposed to express regret for using the word. 
And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. So you, you regret using that word? Yes. You regret using that word? Yes. And this is honestly uh, Chairman Mao style public shaming that the Maoists did during the Cultural Revolution as they were murdering tens of millions of people quite literally. Um, certainly in my parents' lifetime, and some of their murders in my lifetime, plenty of them, you know, millions, but not the tens of millions. Yes, I regret, I regret. Stephen Miller worked in the in the Trump administration, and um, he summed it up pretty well. When it came time to give an apology, to whom did he apologize? He apologized to the criminal alien that stands charged and accused of this savage beating and murder. He said, I will not disrespect that illegal. I will not call them an illegal. People like him built this country. He complimented him. He praised him. He groveled to him. He apologized to him and not to the family of this incredible young woman. Illegal, he did say, illegal alien gang members that murder nursing students built this country. Joe Biden said that. He needs to be impeached yesterday and removed from office with a bulldozer, a chain around his waist. That's right, illegal alien murderers, gang members, probably released from prisons in Venezuela, who have invaded our country illegally, built this country, Joe Biden said. I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. Murderers? Look, they built the country. They built the country. Illegal alien gang members released from prisons in Venezuela that murder nursing students built this country. That's what Joe Biden said. The White House, as a spokesmodel, a spokeswoman who allegedly goes by the name of Olivia Dalton, and she was asked, I believe, aboard Air Force One yesterday about Joe Biden's apology. He apologized, right? Uh, to the murderer, the illegal alien murderer, who is an illegal alien who came into the country illegally, which is illegal, and he's an alien. He's not a resident alien. He's not a legal alien. He is an illegal alien. This is the legal language. Get over it, you bunch of mental cases. And Olivia Dalton lied and lied and lied because they're all liars. Listen to this liar named Olivia Dalton at the White House. Now, you heard him. Uh, Do you regret that? Jonathan Capehart, uh, dressed like Queen Victoria. I do regret that. Yes, I do. And here comes Olivia Dalton from Biden's White House. The president absolutely did not apologize. There was no apology anywhere in that conversation. He did not apologize. Uh, he used a different word. I think uh, what's, what's what we should be really clear about is the facts. So in addition to the fact that, uh, you know, the president did not apologize, uh, I want to make another thing clear. The president spoke directly to this in the State of the Union address not no, four didn't. nights ago. Liar. Uh, when he um, spoke passionately about knowing what it means to lose a child. He and was screaming and yelling. grief and condolences to Lake and Riley's family. No, he didn't. In, in front of the entire country. In front. Now, she is such a liar. She should be fired and probably arrested today, taken away in leg restraints. That is. Now, and there are no reporters there who speak the English language to come back and say, well, wait a minute. Olivia, you just said that he did not apologize. He said he regrets using the word. And if anyone goes to Merriam-Webster's dictionary anymore and looked up the word regret, you'd see that the second definition is to be very sorry for. And if you say you're very sorry for something, then isn't that apologizing? Honey, I'm very sorry. Um, I killed your cat with my motorcycle. I regret killing your cat, but they don't do that because we don't have a legitimate press in Washington or more broadly in the United States of America. We have a gang of Democrat liars who are uh, looking to get into the hot tub with, uh, you know, Roman Polanski. It's uh, pretty amazing stuff, these people. They don't speak the language. Regret means you're sorry. He did not apologize. He didn't say he used a different word. Regret means sorry. Maroon. You know that the best selling Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifier uses oxy technology and helps quickly destroy many, many viruses, odors, mold, and more in your home, in your office. With thousands of five star reviews online, I give it a five star review. I've got two of these at home. It works like a champ. Any smell will vanish after just a few seconds. 
with uh, the Eden Pure Thunderstorm being on. Odors from litter boxes, trash cans, cigarette smoke, dirty diapers, and a whole lot more. No match for the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. The powerful thunderstorm sends out O3 molecules. O3 molecules seek out and destroy odors. Amazing. These molecules even go behind and under furniture. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm. Best of all, no filters to replace and buy over and over again. Scheduling saves you money, saves you hassle. Start enjoying your home again. Get several Eden Pure Thunderstorms for whole home protection. Right now, you can save $200 American on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for a whole home protection because you hang out with me. You get three three units, three thunderstorms for under $200. Put one in your basement, your your bedroom, your family room, your kitchen, any place you like to breathe clean, fresh air. So just go to EdenPureDeals.com. EdenPureDeals.com. Use the discount code CHRIS3. CHRIS and the number 3 to save $200. Great gifts, too. Put one in your teenager's room. That's EdenPureDeals.com. The code is CHRIS3. Yes, sir. Our Democrat Party. Again, they lie to us. We know they're lying to us. They keep lying to us. Just like the Soviet days. Hey, it's Chris Plant. Excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. Now, we've got terrorists and cannibals flooding across our border, and the Democrats applaud that. Joe Biden lied to us recently that he was going to take executive action on the border because he undid all of uh, President Trump's executive action that secured our border. Joe Biden was asked about it yesterday, and now he said, oh, no, there will be no executive action on the border. It takes care of itself. Mr. President, when is it? on the border action happened by itself the passing what that was completely incoherent made no sense they did it by the airplane so the uh, jet engine sound drowns out his voice so later on they can claim that he said something else and there is really nothing good there for the historical record because they're extremely corrupt people biden says he won't take executive action to secure the border wants congress to find a fix Yeah, he said it takes care of itself. The guy needs to be removed from office. He is unbelievably anti-American, un-American, the anti-democratic party. That's a disgrace. Wait till you hear the FBI director sounding the alarm, kind of, because he's a bit of a frou-frou himself. But, oh yeah, ISIS, ISIS is funneling people across our southern border. And still the Democrats won't do anything about it. Because I guess they just want some September 11th action. You know, updating the jihad. Yeah, why are why are people starving in Haiti? It's uh, fruit and vegetables growing everywhere. You don't even have to do anything. You're surrounded by one of the most fertile fishing grounds on the planet Earth. And you're starving to death. Teach a man to fish. All right, speaking of fish, let's go to FBI Director Christopher Wray. Because uh, I'm no fan of Christopher Wray. And the media calls him Chris like they're pals, you know. And they call uh, corrupt senators uh, Robert Menendez uh, Bob because, you know, they all sleep together and go on vacation together and all that stuff. And um, Christopher Ray testifying on Capitol Hill. And it turns out that we've got ISIS directing illegal aliens from Mexico into the United States, ISIS affiliates. And I think if you're an ISIS affiliate, you're ISIS. FBI Director Christopher Ray warns of very dangerous threats at border smuggling network with ISIS ties says he's very concerned about the smuggling network, which is tied to ISIS. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Shouldn't we be conducting air raids into Mexico to blow this stuff up? No, they're handing out gift baskets and green cars, green cards and, and plane tickets and bus tickets to spread people all over the country. The Democrat Party is here to destroy the world. 
They're not liberals. They're the left. FBI Director Christopher Wray yesterday on Capitol Hill. There are a whole host of threats that emanate from the border, Um, and some of them are criminal threats. We talked about fentanyl and violence. An awful lot of the violent crime in the United States uh, is at the hands of gangs who are themselves involved in the distribution of that fentanyl. And uh, maybe um, from uh, Venezuelan prisons and from cartels in Mexico and cartels in Colombia and all that, and a lot of the violence in the United States, the Democrats are increasing violence and crime and murder and gang activity and drug deaths and rapes we've seen in Virginia. A 14-year-old girl hit a knife point by an illegal alien that Joe Biden and the Democrats waved in. And Christopher Wray isn't doing nearly enough to, to fight. Um, who hired these people? Oh, the Democrats. Who voted for these people? You got some splaining to do. I'm going to tell you, I, uh, we, we ought to be directing all of these murderers and gang members to Martha's Vineyard and to the Upper West Side of Manhattan and to liberal um, enclaves across the country. But wait, it gets better. So the gangs, the threats, they uh, emanate from the border, the violent crime, the fentanyl death, the the violence, the hands of the gangs. Um, Hey, I noticed that a long time ago. Where the hell were you, FBI Director Christopher Wray? Maybe he's a Mary. Maybe he's a Mary. It's a J. Edgar Hoover reference there. But never mind that. Christopher Ray, FBI director, yesterday on Capitol Hill, um, warning us, but no one will do anything. We are concerned about the uh, terrorism implications uh, from potential uh, targeting of vulnerabilities at the border. There is a particular network um, that uh, has, uh, where some of the overseas facilitators of the smuggling network have ISIS ties. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. The smuggling network has ISIS ties, which is the new Al-Qaeda, which uh, Al-Qaeda carried out the attacks of September 11, 2001, murdering thousands, thrusting us into a global war, which is still ongoing. And uh, and they just kind of shrug. Like, I don't know, I got an armored vehicle. I'm surrounded by guys with guns who will shoot back. So I'm not too worried. I'm the FBI director. We live in a very corrupt country, right? So ISIS, why, why would anybody be concerned about that? We're seeing a wide array of dangerous threats that emanate from the border. That includes everything from drug trafficking. The FBI alone, he said, seized enough fentanyl in the last two years, to kill 270 million people. To kill two, just the FBI, not even counting uh, border protection and other law enforcement, just the FBI, enough fentanyl to kill 270 million people coming from communist China the, and through Mexico and the cartels. I'd be conducting airstrikes if I were president. And we lose 100,000 people a year now to fatal drug overdoses. That was not true just a small number of years ago. And that's just on the fentanyl side, he said. Pretty amazing stuff. Awful lot of violent crime in the United States is at the hands of gangs who are themselves involved in the distribution of fentanyl. So the killings in in addition to the overdoses. But that's okay. Because the Democrats are the left, and the left has no regard for human life whatsoever, and they never have. We also confirmed more than 1.8 million gotaways on our southern border since Joe Biden became president. And he's talking about these gangs there. And, you know, I mean, that's three times the population of Washington, D.C., And those are just the gotaways that we know about. Then there are the gotaways that we don't know about. We really don't have a sovereign nation anymore because the Democrats and the smugglers' networks tied to ISIS. What is ISIS doing in Mexico? Overseas facilitators of the smuggling network have ISIS ties that we're very concerned about. Yeah, I would think so. 
Senator Marco Rubio was there in the hearing room. Uh, he asked a question. There is a network we're concerned about that has facilitators involved in it that have ties to ISIS and Correct. Other terrorist organizations. Correct. 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 And uh, what are you doing about it, Marco Rubio, is the follow-up question there. And if you don't have a really impressive answer, then you are so fired that the cops should come and drag you out of there like you're a gold star father. But they don't. Senator John Cornyn from Texas, also in the hearing room, asking questions of Christopher Ray. Twenty-six people killed 3,000 Americans on 9-11. I worry 19 people. that among the people that are coming across the border, that are evading law enforcement, that there are some people among those that mean to do us harm. Do you yes, share sir? that concern? I do. I do. Uh, well, um, uh, again, the natural follow-up there might be, what are you doing about it? Because that's what I'd like to know. Because it sounds to me like we're at war. And by the way, it was 19 people. What the hell is going on? Is everyone mentally impaired? There were 19 hijackers, and Zacharias Musawi was the 20th hijacker. And now maybe he knows something I don't know. Uh, 26 people carried out the attacks of September 11th. Absolutely extraordinary. Just amazing stuff. Man, oh man. Now, the uh, let's go to soundbite number 19. Um, hearing on Capitol Hill today with Robert Hur, the special counsel, H-U-R, the special counsel investigating Joe Biden's uh, mishandling of uh, illegal uh, document, of, you know, classified documents. And he's not allowed to take him as senator, but he did. He's not allowed to take him as vice president, but he did. He doesn't have executive authority and executive privilege as vice president. Only the president does. Uh, Andy Biggs in the hearing room today. What are you going to ask about? We're going to focus on Joe Biden's middle capacity, whether if he is so bad off that you can't prosecute him, should he be running the the, the greatest nation in the history of the world? Uh, and can he do it, uh, you know, carefully with probity, et cetera? Second thing is um, we're going to explore all the cavalier ways that Joe Biden left classified documents all over the place. Yeah, um, you know, in the garage, the Corvette, above a steakhouse on Capitol Hill, somewhere in Chinatown. Uh, some of these places where his Chinese business pals, who have ties to the Communist Party, had access. And somehow that's lost in the discussion, Congressman Andy Biggs. Look, he left code words uh, at a party that he was at up in New York. I mean, so so we're going to explore that. And then we're going to get to the third thing that I think is important is, was this willful and intentional? And I think it, we're going to find that it was willful and intentional. When I say that, was he telling people about this classified information? And the actual uh, actual reality is he was. And he knew it was classified. And he knew he didn't have authority. He was trained in it for 50 years, good grief. And he's out there uh, passing classified information around. And uh, that's clear violations of the law. I, uh, I would say so. Uh, Andy Biggs, he's in the hearing now. Uh, Jerry Nadler, the uh, poor sign lap band man from New York, he, uh, he is not an honest person. He's not a good person or a truthful person. He's an extremist, a partisan hack. Um, and he came in on the attack. This is what the Democrats do. They come in on the attack. They're kind of not laying a glove on Robert Hurd today, the Democrats, because they know he's right about everything in their, and their rectal apertures for even questioning any of this. Um, it's all proved their transcripts, their audio recordings that the Justice Department has still not released to Congress, even though Congress has demanded them, because they're a bunch of criminals uh, at the Justice Department. Hand over the tapes. And uh, just so here's uh, Nadler. House Republicans may be desperate to convince America that white conservative men are on the losing end of a two-tiered justice system. What? A theory that appeals to the MAGA crowd but has no basis in reality. Burn a bank. Um, White, uh, sorry, MAGA. So it's just he's a political extremist. He's a political hack. He's, he's, uh, He's Jewish and he's supporting Hamas. And now the cannibals in Haiti uh, have his support. Uh, just a minute. The med- uh, white, yeah, no, that's not what's going on. That's not at all what's, but at least he racialized it and picked a racist fight, the party of the KKK that the Democrats are. Just extraordinary stuff. 
Now, of course, there was the pre-dawn raid on Roger Stone's home with the CNN camera crew in tow, and Peter Navarro, uh, executive privilege, White House official, uh, who was on his way to prison because the Democrats targeted him, even though he had executive privilege. I, I recall James O'Keefe of Project Veritas being raided to get Ashley Biden's diary back, which she left in another drug rehab center because the Biden family doesn't even know how many grandchildren they have. But at least she used to shower with her father at inappropriate times and ages. But Hunter Biden's contempt of Congress, Peter Navarro going to jail for contempt of Congress. Hunter Biden is playing golf today with billionaires, probably from China and uh, maybe Russian hookers uh, driving the, the beer cart because there is a two-tiered system of justice, and anybody that doesn't have their head wedged into their gigantic dark, dark and remote location would know that. All right, so there's uh, Nadler. Now let's go to Robert Hur himself during his opening statement today on Capitol Hill about, you know, we already know that Joe Biden is a sad, pathetic, uh, his brain doesn't work, he's, a, he's too old to do the job, and everybody knows it. But uh, the lie is so big that they have to keep it alive. Here's Robert Hur, the special counsel about the president's memory, so let me say a few words about that. My task was to determine whether the president retained or disclosed national defense information willfully. That means knowingly and with the intent to do something the law forbids. I could not make that determination without assessing the president's state of mind. For that reason, I had to consider the president's memory and overall mental state and how a jury likely would perceive his memory and mental state in a criminal trial. Naturally. These are the types of issues that prosecutors analyze every day. And because these issues were important to my ultimate decision, I had to include a discussion of them in my report to the Attorney General. The evidence and the President himself put his memory squarely at issue. We interviewed the President and asked him about his recorded statement. Quote, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote. Hey, look at that. He told us that he didn't remember saying that to his ghostwriter. I don't know. He also said he didn't remember finding any classified material in his home after his vice presidency. Where'd this come from? And he didn't remember anything about how classified documents about Afghanistan made their way into his garage. Where's Afghanistan? I don't know nothing about no Afghanistan. Some of the clips released from the uh, report earlier... We have also considered that at trial, Mr. Biden would likely present himself to a jury, as he did during our interview of him, as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Robert Hur. My assessment in the report about the relevance of the president's memory was necessary and accurate and fair. Most importantly, what I wrote is what I believe the evidence shows and what I expect jurors would perceive and believe. I did not sanitize my explanation. Nor did I disparage the president unfairly. Also from the report, he did not, Joe Biden, he did not remember when he was vice president. Forgetting on the first day of the interview, when his term ended. He did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died. Now, we know this. We've known this. We have a very corrupt news media. We've got Joe Scarborough on DNC TV this morning. Uh, just lying up a storm. They just lie and they lie and they lie. And they get up and then they lie again. Just amazing. Now they're putting Peter Navarro in jail. Try to put Roger Stone in jail. They try to put all the enemies of the Democrat Party in jail. They've, they have the word is weaponized, the Department of Justice and the FBI. Not against ISIS or gangs from Venezuela, but against the Republican Party. Jerry Nadler says it's white men. Well, the party of the KKK seems to be targeting white men today. I'm not going to apologize for noticing that. You guys could attack black people, but that'd be racist. And with your history of racism, you might want to stay away from that. Although you really don't, do you? You just lie your way out of it. The Democrat Party. They should probably be canceled. Uh, By the way, today there are uh, primary elections in Georgia, in Mississippi, and in the state of Washington. And uh, there are 161 Republican delegates up for grabs. 
that could push President Trump over the top in the number of delegates that he uh, he already has, plus these delegates. Uh, so if you're in Georgia, if you're in Mississippi, if you're if you're in the state of Washington, get out and vote for crying out loud. Push President Trump over the top. He needs uh, 1,215 delegates, 1,215. It's uh, 1215. It's the, obviously, as any six-year-old can tell you, the day that the, the year, rather, that the Magna Carta was uh, signed. And uh, President Trump now has 1,078 delegates. He needs 1215. Magna Carta, think Magna Carta. Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, By the way, an American hostage taken by the troglodyte killers from hell in Gaza who uh, was uh, taken, we thought taken hostage, an American, it's a Chen, uh, was his name. The Israeli Defense Forces announced today that U.S. hostage Ite Chen, who was taken hostage by Hamas, was actually killed on October 7th, and they've held his body all these months probably abusing it in untold ways. And uh, Chen was one of six Americans that was still considered to be held hostage in Gaza, but they're murderers, they're savages. So they murdered him. And by the way, you know, with the rape is resistance and babies are occupiers movement, uh, keep in mind that the Hollywood liberals at the Oscars night before last were wearing, they were wearing uh, the red lapel pins, the buttons, with a red hand a red hand on the uh, on the pin. And I told you about it yesterday, but that red hand is a symbol that Hamas and the terrorists use to represent a lynching 24 years ago of two Israeli soldiers. And their bodies were set on fire. One of them set on fire. Their bodies were torn apart and mutilated. And Hamas is very proud of it. There's a photograph of the murderers with their blood-drenched hands out the windows of, uh, of a building. And when they held up their bloody hands, the crowd cheered because in Ramallah they murdered these two young Israeli men. And the symbol of the bloody hand is from this lynching of two Israeli soldiers in 2020 on the West Bank in Ramallah. And now the Democrats are wearing it as a symbol of solidarity with the enemies of civilization. They're a sick bunch of people. 